Hey friends, it's Len here at 1A Auto. Today we're working on our 2004 Volvo XC90. This is the all-wheel drive version. We're gonna be replacing a left front lower ball joint. It's gonna be super easy. I can do it, you can do it too. If you need this or any other part, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Thanks. Okay friends, so just a quick note. We're gonna be doing a lot of videos and replacing parts on this particular vehicle. So if you happen to notice in the video that you're watching, all of a sudden the part just is brand new and it wasn't brand new before, odds are we cut out, we were doing another job, we replaced that part, we cut back in, and we're just showing you the stuff that you need to know to be able to do your particular replacement. Okay friends, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up the wheel. I've got my vehicle uh, supported from the ground, but the wheel's still touching so that it can't spin while I do this. I'm just gonna use my 19 millimeter. I have a, um, a thin wall socket on there so it can squeeze in between the rim and the, uh, and the lug nut. I'm just gonna break it free. It's a tight one. That's the reason for doing it while it's still on the ground. If you try doing this up in the air, the wheel of course is gonna spin. Okay, so I've got three out of my five lug bolts out. This is what they look like right here. They screw directly into the wheel bearing. So once you take off this one right here, and then you go to take this one off, there's gonna be nothing holding this wheel on. So you need to pay attention to that. I'm just gonna take this one lug here, lug bolt, put it in a couple threads, and that's just so the wheel won't be able to come off and potentially hurt me. Push my wheel up against, just grab it. I'm holding the wheel so it can't fall down at this point. And we'll just grab it off and set it aside safely. So we're gonna take off this uh, lower ball joint nut right here. Just gonna use a little bit of penetrant. Now I'm gonna continue with my 21 millimeter socket and I'm gonna remove the nut. Safety glass is on, hand protection of course. Here we are. I'm just gonna put it right on here. Just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna use my tool here. I've got a pickle fork and I've got my small hammer. I'm just gonna slide it in here like this. The purpose of the pickle fork is to essentially be a wedge, and it's gonna try to wedge between the lower control arm and the, um, the upper part of the ball joint there, and hopefully pull the uh, stud through the control arm. That's my plan. Okay can see it moving. So we know we're going in the right direction here. We'll come over here. We have an 18 millimeter headed bolt, goes straight up through, and then on top, there's a 21 millimeter nut. So I'll just grab my air gun. I'm gonna put my 21 up there. Maybe I'll come around from this side. It's a little bit easier to get to. There we are. And uh, safety glasses, blast away. There's our nut. There's our bolt. We'll set these aside. So now we're gonna remove these bolts right here. 17 and a 17. That's gonna hold in the forward part of the uh, lower control arm, okay? So once we break these free, there's a possibility that this could wanna move and do whatever it wants to do. So just make sure you're safe. We've got our nut on here. If you don't have your nut started on there, just go ahead and do it for me, please. And that's just gonna make it so when this does come free, if it does decide it wants to do something, we're gonna have a point holding it so it can't fall down and hurt you. That's what our bolt looks like. There we are, both the same. We could set these aside. All right, so let's get our ball joint nut off of here. Set that aside. Let's try to bring this down now. There we go. Gave us just enough room without pulling too much on this because we don't want to separate our axle, right? So we got the ball joint out. I'm just gonna try to, there we are. Cool. All right, so now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna try to pry that out of there. Come right in between the subframe and the control arm. There we are. So we're just gonna remove these bolts right here. To do that, we're gonna use a 14 millimeter. At this point, the only thing holding your ball joint into the knuckle is just the fact that it's pressed in. It comes up inside this area right here. 
So to get it out, it's gonna be much more of a hassle than taking out these two bolts. We're probably gonna use an air chisel, come right along this corner right here, over here, over here, over here, over here, 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 and then hopefully it'll uh, come out. So I'm just gonna come right down onto this lip right here, and I'm gonna to try to air chisel down. You could try to use something as a ha like a hammer and punch, uh, whatever you've got, but the air chisel is definitely gonna be my way of trying to get it to go come out. I'm just gonna give it a try. I've got my safety glasses, ear protection, hand protection. It's breaking free already. That's a really good thing. Super excited about that. Okay, so I got it coming down from this side. I'm just gonna come over here and try to get it to come down as straight as possible so I don't mess up this hole. This side's much harder to get into with the angle of everything. There we are. That came out a lot easier than I was expecting, so I'm super excited about that. There's our lower ball joint. Let's move along. Hey friends, a quick product comparison for you over here. We have our front lower ball joint out of our 2004 Volvo XC90. We just took it out, it was super easy. And over here, we have our brand new quality 1A Auto Part. Both these ball joints are created the exact same. You've got the same mounting holes up along the top. You've got the splined area coming up along here. That's where it presses up into the knuckle. You've got your shaft area. It comes with a brand new neoprene locking nut. And it even comes with brand new mounting bolts. With all that said, I don't see any reason why this wouldn't be a quality part to install into the vehicle, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. If you need this or any other part, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Thanks. So up in here is where the uh, ball joint pressed up into. You can see where all the splines were. It's pretty nasty and cruddy up in there. So you can just use this brush right here, available at 1AAuto.com. A little bit of parts cleaner, uh, safety glasses of course, hand protection, we're using a chemical. I'm just gonna blast this up in there. Use this little brush. Okay, so now we're gonna use a little bit of copper never seize up inside this ball joint portion of the hole. We don't need to get it up inside there or inside there. Those are the two mounting holes. The brand new bolts came with brand new th uh, thread locker on it. So we definitely don't wanna get never seize up inside the mounting holes. We just need it inside where the ball joint's gonna go. There we are, that looks pretty decent. So we'll just take our brand new quality 1A Auto ball joint, our two brand new bolts that came with it. I'm just gonna see if we can get this so it's going up in. I'm gonna take my bolt. I'm just gonna see if I can get it to thread in a little bit here. That's just gonna help make sure that the ball joint's lined up for the next step, which would be essentially pressing this up and in here. There's gonna be several ways we're gonna do this. I'm gonna snug these up back and forth, back and forth, see if it'll press up. When it seems like it's binding up, I'll just give it a couple uh, you know, loving bonks along the side here and just try to help it along. We need it to go up as straight as possible so you don't just stay on one side, crank, 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 tighten it up so the whole thing's just going like this and then hope that you're gonna do this side. You need to get it to go up straight as possible. So I'm just gonna use my 14. You can tell as I start to draw this up, it's starting to canter a little bit off to the side. So I'm just gonna go over to this side, just like that. This side. I know what you're thinking. It's just, it's crazy to keep having to go back and forth. And I get that, but it's super important to just make sure that these are going one, two, one, two, back and forth to make sure this goes up straight. So we're gonna torque these down to 29 foot-pounds. Just gonna hit them one more time. Both of those are tight. Let's move along. Okay, so we cleaned up our three bolts here. We've got the thick one. The thick one goes through this, the hockey puck bushing. And then you have your other two that match up. 
They go through your subframe and then into the uh, screw holes in the control arm. And then of course you get the ball joint hole over here, but that'll be the last thing that we do more than likely. So we'll put down the two bolts that we're not gonna be using yet because I'm gonna start with the hockey puck bushing. I'm gonna see if I can get this to work its way in there. Just gotta get it lined up. Seconds just to get it lined up perfect. But once you do, it'll be all set here. Let's see if that's going in. Feels like it's going in. Just make sure we get a couple good threads going up through there. Oh yeah, I can feel it coming up through the top. So I know it's definitely going up. All right, it's all the way up there. Okay, we've got our uh, 21 millimeter headed nut. You could use some thread locker on these bolts if you'd like to. We'll say it's your prerogative. I'm gonna use my other two bolts. I'm gonna come through here. I should wanna go right through. Then it's gonna come through this side, right into there. And you might have to just kinda wiggle the control arm around a little bit. There we are. Just gonna snug these up using our 17 millimeter. So now we'll just uh, snug up this bolt right here. We're gonna use our 21 millimeter wrench on the top, on the nut side, and then an 18 millimeter right here on the bolt side. There we are. All right, let's grab the torque specs and move along. So we're gonna torque these two bolts right here to 48 foot pounds with our torque wrench, with our 17 millimeter socket. Just gonna hit them one more time. So let's torque this uh, rearward bolt up. We're gonna go 77 foot pounds. Once again, with my 21 millimeter wrench up top there. I got my 18 on the bottom here. All right, I'm gonna hit it one more time. Tight, and those two are tight. Let's move along. Um, so now what we're gonna do, because we can't obviously lift up on this with the strut holding it down to be able to get the control arm um, over the ball joint stud. We're just gonna create a little bit of slack here for the ABS cable. To do that, I'm just gonna grab right here and try to roll it out of here. I'm just gonna try to grab it, get it out of there. We wanna make sure we have plenty of slack because what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, take out these two nuts, take the bolts out, and we're just gonna lift up on the knuckle a little bit, drop the ball joint stud into the lower control arm, and then remount all this. It's gonna be pretty easy. This just rolls out of here. Now we've got plenty of slack for in case, God forbid, something happens. Um, something to remember once we get these out is that we still have the axle attached to the knuckle and of course, you know, the outer tie rod end and stuff and the hose. But anyway, um, so when you're moving the knuckle around, you wanna be careful not to pull too far out because you could separate your axle boot right here. There's a joint in there and there's one up in the um, outer portion of the axle as well. So if you pull too far, you could separate it and cause yourself some axle issues down the road, which would be bad. We'll use a 21 and an 18. I'll use my 18 wrench to hold it. My 21 on my uh, air gun. Safety glasses on, hand protection. That's what our nut looks like. That's what the bolt looks like. Let's put them both together. Same thing for this one. Okay, so once I take this out, what's gonna be holding it in? The axle and a couple other really not very strong things. So just keep that in mind. All we wanna do now is just lift this up and get the ball joint stud, which is right here, to go into the control arm hole, which is up a little higher. There we are. Let's see if I can get this, there we are. There we are, get this bar out of here. I use the bar to pry down on the lower control arm and then brute strength to lift up on the knuckle. Now that it's in there, we can continue by 
relining everything up here. It's so close. There we go. Once I get the lower bolt in here, I'll be able to do whatever I want with it. It's just uh, getting things situated. It's the hardest part here. There we go. It's going in. Bar out of here. Well, that part right there is going to be your test. I'm sure you can do it. It's a bonk. There we are. Uh, it's your prerogative if you want to use a little bit of thread locker on these. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go right on here. All right, let's move ahead to the next step. So we're gonna take our neoprene locking nut. Just start it right on here. Okay. We're gonna use our 21 millimeter and I'm just gonna bottom this out and then we'll go ahead and torque it down. Let's torque it. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and torque this down to 74 foot pounds. There it is. I'm gonna hit it one more time. We know this is tight. We know these two are tight. These two are tight. And this is tight. We know that those up there are tight. Everything's tight. Let's move along to the next step. Just gonna snug this up to 77 and then we'll continue on to the second step. Uh, 77 foot pounds, by the way, not inch pounds. <laughs> Big difference. There we are. Oops. Break it free. This one. There we are. Okay. So now, I'll leave that on there. What we're gonna do, we're gonna use an angle gauge and we're gonna bring it all the way to 90 degrees. So I'll put this up here. I'm gonna put this kind of like this. I'm gonna bring it over, set it up against here so it's resting. Now I'm gonna use my ratchet. I'm gonna try to bring this around to 90 degrees. Here we are. Get my tool out of here. Cool. I went just a little bit past because when I first started, the wrench was turning. I zoned holding onto it. So anyway, we'll do the same to the lower one and then off we go. Okay, now that we have those both torqued, we'll get our ABS wire back on here. I'm just gonna slide it through like this. Just kind of roll it as I push. You should wanna slide right in. This one right here, I'm gonna come from the back side, get it up on there. Now I'm gonna roll it, slide it right in. Give them a nice little tug. Those are going nowhere. We know our ABS wire is secured we can move along to the next step. Okay, so that was a really fun job. We got it all done. We got everything torqued down the way it's supposed to be. The only thing that's left to do, of course, is to get the wheel on, get that torqued down, and of course, drive it down the road, make sure everything feels good. Lastly, make sure you get your alignment. Other than that, great job. Down the road you go. Okay, so now to make it easier to get the wheel up on here, where we don't have the lug studs that are sticking out and you put your wheel up on, it just kind of holds the wheel nice and easy for you. You don't have to stand there and hold it forever. Volvo decided to make it fun and interesting and you know, make you work your muscles a little bit. Well, 1A Auto sells this awesome tool and basically all these are is they're gonna give you a lug stud. So when you're putting your wheel on, you just slide your wheel right over this and it's gonna kind of hold it there so you don't have to sit there and try to muscle it the whole time while you try to line up the holes and put your lug stud in or lug bolt. So I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna grab my wheel Bring it right over. Hold on to one of my lug nuts. I'm just gonna bring this up. Slide it right over that. Boy, oh boy, that made it easy. So now we just take our lug bolt, put our wheel up against there, start this in, hopefully. 
should have grabbed one of my sockets. It would have made my life a little easier here. There we are. And even though I was holding the wheel steady that whole time, I didn't have to have my whole body holding it, try to line it up while I'm staring into the hole and put this through. Thank you, 1A Auto. So we'll just start all these lug nuts in and then we'll bottom them out, torque them down. Okay, we've got all the lug nuts bottomed out. Now we'll just bring the vehicle back down so the wheel's touching the ground, but without full force of the uh, vehicle's weight on the wheel. And then we'll torque down these lug nuts. So here we are, friends. We've got our torque wrench out. It's set to 103 foot-pounds. I have my thin wall, 19 millimeter socket, because there's limited space to get in between these lug bolts and the wheel. When we tighten these down, we're gonna go in a star pattern. Here, 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 here. And then if we decide to go around again, we'll do the same thing. But anyway, the reason for going in a star is essentially so as we're going around, if the wheel's cantered a little bit, it won't get stuck that way. And maybe the torque wrench thinks it's torquing it down to 103 like it's supposed to be, but it's a little bit cocked off to the side. Then you drive it down the road, hit a bump or whatever, everything starts loosening up, your lug bolts come out. Long story short, just tighten them in a star pattern. There we are. I always like to go around twice. Doesn't cost me anything, doesn't hurt me any. And it's a small price to pay for safety. Okay, all torqued up. Great job, everybody. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.